watching The High Road with me, Keith Warren. Brought to you by Timber Creek Outdoors. Well, Johnny, you ready to saddle up that big boy? Oh, yeah. All right, load her up. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to Africa, where some of the biggest animals on the planet roam. And specifically, this is the Eastern Cape of South Africa, where we're bringing one of the biggest rifles that we know of to go on a safari. You ready to let it rip, Johnny? Fire in the hole. Do it. Yeah, baby. I think you're going to like this. This is where centuries ago, the hunter stayed overlooking that beautiful valley. It is the final hour. There are more baboons here than any place I've ever seen. If you never take the shot, you'll never hit anything. Johnny, you beauty. This is actually the fifth time that I've hunted here in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, and I love this place. If I didn't, I wouldn't have been coming back for so many times. So the plan on this safari is to uh, actually take the 50 BMG and see what we can knock down with it. I'm Greg Harvey, the owner of Hunters Hill Safaris in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Our property is very extensive. We have 70 plus different species. Keith Warren's been hunting with us on numerous occasions and uh, this time has brought a 50 BMG. It's the first time anyone's brought such a, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a rifle, I'd call it a big gun cannon. This time it looks like Keith is focused on his baboon hunting, which I believe has made him quite famous on one of his previous shows. So I think he'd be looking for more and more baboons. Baboons, what is it about baboons that uh, turns my crank? Um, they're smart, man. They pattern the hunters. They pattern the traffic. Um, they've got to eat and drink, though. And so uh, we know they're going to come out of that rough country and come down to low stuff uh, for a snack. One of the best kill shots that we ever got was a, a baboon came in, and, and I was using a crossbow. He came in, he picked up that orange, and he held it right here. And I had to shoot him through the orange. Anyway, they've got great hearing, great sense of smell, great vision. They're really, really keen, and I love hunting them. All right, so I'm going to tell you about Johnny. Johnny is a Johnny's a really good guy. Oh, tell them what your favorite food in the world is. Crawfish. I've been kicked out of multiple places for eating too many, and we're about to go in here and tear them up. All right, so what they've started to do here is They've ceased all crawfish cooking, I'm pretty sure, and slowed down bringing them out because they're afraid we're gonna eat them all. It's a classic move. I've had it done to me many times. Johnny is a godsend to me, okay? I'm serious. Uh, I met Johnny at the SHOT Show uh, two SHOT Shows ago, and uh, he and I hit it off. And uh, he, he asked me before uh, he came down to work for me, he said, do you think you can keep me busy? I went, <laughs> anyway. I keep him busy eight days a week, and he's awesome. And I got wind that when Johnny was a little boy, Johnny always dreamed of hunting in Africa, so here we are, but he always dreamed of hunting for a kudu. So I decided to make it happen. So I've been wanting to come to Africa since I was just a little guy. I grew up being so fascinated with all the wildlife and everything they had over there and watching the Lion King and thinking it was so cool. To get the opportunity is really gonna be awesome. I'm excited to not only be able to do it, but also be able to do it with my team, Keith and Maddie, and uh, get over there and, and see it firsthand and really appreciate it for the first time. Now keep in mind, Johnny's gonna be taking along the 50 BMG. It's the only big rifle we brought. Okay, and the Cooter are gonna be a long ways out there. So Johnny always says, man, I'm gonna go to the gym and I kind of pick on him and say, man, you're looking a bit porky, really? Really, I mean, he, anyway. Anyway, Johnny's gonna get his exercise by carrying that 35 pound rifle up and down the hills. And it's gonna be tough. Man, that is a big old gun. You know, a lot of people think that a 50 BMG is overkill for hunting, but I personally think that they're wrong. Hi everybody, my name is Johnny Piazza, producer for The High Road. And uh, true to high road nature, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different on this trip. We're in South Africa, we've got a 50, and uh, Keith, Maddie, and I have looked all over the internet, and we haven't seen anybody else doing anything with a 50 BMG in Africa. So we're about to have some fun. 
everywhere I go, I know that Lucas products are going to keep my farms working tip top shape. This thing has been all over the mountains in South Africa and it's filthy dirty. So what we're going to do, we're going to get it cleaned up for long term storage and I'm going to show you how to do just that. Now that we have the gun torn apart, here's some of the stuff that I'm going to use to, to do this job. Of course, I've got nothing but the Lucas Oil Outdoor line here. All right, we're going to spray down the bolt first off with the aerosol Lucas CLP and then we're going to start on the bore. We're going to take a mop and we're going to put it on the end of our cleaning rod and we're going to soak it in the Lucas bore solvent and run that mop down the bore from the receiver end to the muzzle end many times. After that, we'll take a brass brush, put it on the ramrod, and run it through there. Then we're gonna run a dry patch through just to see how clean it is. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some extreme duty gun oil on the patch and make sure and lubricate the inside of the bore. Once you get it all serviced up like this, then you can put it back together. You know, I've been hunting for a long time now. Uh, my dad was fortunate enough to teach me everything I know about hunting. Um, he took a, me and my brothers deer and turkey hunting every year. And he uh, really, you know, instilled in us a passion for hunting and, and a work ethic that comes with it. And uh, always told us that if something is worth having, it's never easy to get. There is no such thing as an easy kudu hunt. Like there's no such thing as an easy turkey hunt, to be honest with you. I mean, kudu have it all. They've got eyes, ears, noses, and I mean, they are some kind of hardy critters. They can go up that, they can live in nothing. They are tough as can be. And it is no surprise they call them the gray ghost. They are beautiful. And the big bulls, oh God, they're a trophy. And it's something Johnny's wanted all his life, but I think it's gonna turn out to be a little bit more challenging than what Johnny thought. Kudu, um, to me, is one of my favorite animals. It is my, it is my favorite animal tank. A kudu is just, its body is just a bit smaller than an elk, to describe it in terms of a American people. Um, and it's got spiral horns. They're very skittish. They're like, you got it's very hard to get close on a kudu, you know. And I mean, they can walk into one little bush on a flat, and they walk in there, and then you walk in the bush, and they've just disappeared. You don't know where they've gone. I mean, they don't get the name for the gray ghost for no reason. All right, so we just had a couple kudu, uh, some bulls and cows running up the mountain. And um, Simon here saw that there was one bull that he was a mature bull, good bull, but uh, only had one horn. Um, and they're still pretty far away. So right now we're going to get back in the vehicle and uh, keep working our way around here and try to find one that's a true shooter. This kudu hunt with Johnny was turning out a lot, a lot tougher than expected, you know. We, we hunted this one area very hard, and then that's when I realized no kudu hunt is ever easy, you know. I mean, we hunted that area like flat out, like flat. There was no place we didn't look, and they somehow just disappeared. I just told Johnny, I said, you're not leaving here without a kudu bull. All right, so we just made it to the top of this cliff, overlooking a little valley and then a hill up on the other side. Simon and the tracker are going to the edge of the cliff and looking down into the basin and across the hill and seeing if they can spot a kudu. So we get on this kudu and uh, Simon says, Johnny, you got to get the gun up. He's not going to be here for long. He's walking up the hill, he's moving fast, and I get on him. I said, Simon, give me a range on him. Simon turns to me, he says, he's 472 yards. A little bit of a longer shot than I would have liked to have taken, but it's now or never. I pull the trigger and I missed. When I missed, I was extremely bummed out. And it wasn't just because I missed. I had my whole team here, and we were using a lot of resources on it, and it just, it hurt. Um, but like Keith says, and I learned a good life lesson here also, if you never take the shot, you'll never hit anything. So we had a kudu out there at about 500 yards, more than I wanted to do with this gun, but hit a little low. But um, that's the way it goes. I guess we're gonna pack up the gun and get back out and try to, uh, look for some more, so we'll see what we can do. You ever done anything in your life that you want to do all your life and all of a sudden it kicks your butt? I mean, really, really hard, it's like, and you're still having fun. It's like, hurt me some more, coach. That's Johnny. So we get set up down in this valley and I've got the 50 up on the rest. 
and pointed at this tree. And Simon says, hurry up, get ready. We've got cows and a bull working their way up the ridge and they're gonna be here any second. So I'm ready, I'm waiting, I'm on the bush. All that bull has to do is walk out and he's mine. And all of a sudden the cows bust out, they're running up the hill and I'm in one spot, I'm ready. If that bull walks out, all I gotta do is pull the trigger, but he doesn't. So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting on the bull. And all of a sudden I hear something to my right. He's right here, he's to the right, he's to the right. Take him, take him, take him. Hold on a second. There. How, how far, how far? Do it. How far? Do it. How far? Gotta get... Where is he, where is he? Everybody turns, Keith is struggling to get the camera over there. Sure enough, he got him on film. And I try to get the gun, but now I'm sideways. It's too late. He peaked the hill and he was gone. Turns out the kudu, the bull, I mean, was on our right. And he got over the hill before we could get a shot. So we're making a game plan right now. Simon says, stay positive. We're gonna hunt till the very end. So we work our way up this ridge and Simon comes back and says, Johnny, Johnny, there's kudu over this hill. They're on the oranges, but they're not gonna be there for long. I got that tree in the way, don't stop him. 320. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hey, take him. How high over? Right on his back? Yes, top of his back. Got Johnny, it. you <laughs> you Put, one in it. Put back it to your right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Don't shoot again. Did we just shoot a kudu? <laughs> Did we shoot a kudu? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I Josh. cannot tell you the emotion flowing through me right now. I can't believe it. Seriously, I feel like I'm in like some other world right now because I cannot believe it. It is the final hour. It's the... <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. Seriously. You're the man. The most incredible two days of hunting I think I've ever had. <laughs> Up and down mountains. Oh my God, in ravines. Carrying this big old gun up the mountain, seriously. The feeling that I have right now, I feel like I'm in another world. I am just ecstatic. That was so awesome. And to see, let's go. God, you let's wanna go, go check out your shots. Let's go look right, at your shots. Right, let's, let's go, go check them out. All right, folks, so here he is, the gray ghost of Africa. I'll tell you what, we have been hunting kudu for what, two days now? Oh, two days nonstop, yeah. Straight through, all we did was stop for lunch on the mountain and that was it. It's been tough, and the reason it's been so tough, one of the reasons, other than the fact that they are incredibly hard to hunt, is that we've been doing it with a uh, 35 pound 50 BMG. Our buddy Austin Rohr from uh, Superior Outfitters in Tyler, Texas sent us this gun for this African safari, and um, I'll tell you what, it is a beast. Very big bullet, but a lot of fun to shoot, but hard to lug around the mountain. But look, check out what it did. This is the entry hole. So he was quartered away, and it made a massive entry hole. And it actually exited out his neck. So it went through all his vitals here, and made a very ethical shot. He went down right away. Um, and good thing too, because I don't think I could handle another one of these getting away from us. Earlier today, I had a shot with the rifle, and um, he was just a little bit too far. Um, and I, you know, pulled the shot and it hit a little low, a little bit to the right, and that was kind of a, that kind of hit hard. It was tough, but um, it made it that much sweeter in the end when we ended up putting one down. Um, and they are beautiful animals. I mean, the spiraled horns, uh, the beautiful skin. I've always wanted to kill one of these since I was a little kid, always wanted to hunt them. I will be back definitely to hunt kudu, and I hope with you. No, of good? course. I had a great time with you. Me too. To me Thank anymore. you. Thank you very much. No I appreciate problem, it. Johnny. What do you say we get him back to the skin and chat? All right, let's go. I can't explain to you the feeling. It was just the last two days of all this difficulty, all this effort just hit me at once. It was so emotional. I, you know, I, I gave Simon a big old hug because I knew that it, right then that it would be a moment that I would never forget. And that's why I love hunting is because it really brings people together and it brings out your true emotions in the moment and there's no other way, in my opinion, to experience that. I was just so determined to shoot a kudu with Johnny, and I mean, at the end, where it all came together, the last, the last day, the last hour of daylight we had, um, <laughs> got on him, got the camera on him, Johnny pulled off an amazing shot, and the rest is history. Taxidermy work for the High Road Group is provided by Conroe Taxidermy, Conroe, Texas.